Okay, this is another example from your book that I thought was a really cool example, kind of similar to the one we did. So we've got this semicircular rod connected at A, um, has weight W, radius R, and it's attached at pin B um, and rests against, um, sorry, it's attached at A and it rests against B. Um, so the only reaction force at B would be um, away from the wall, but it's not holding it in. It's not, it there wouldn't be a reaction force um, pulling on it, pulling on the rod. Um, there are reaction forces at A because, um, you know, it's going to, it can, it, it's holding it there. So it's going to have an AX and an AY. Um, but then the other thing is this rod is going to have um, its centroid. Let's see, why am I not, why am I not drawing? Its centroid is going to be like right around here around its center. And so if we go down and look at the picture that they drew, let's see, um, right here, right, we can think about the moments here. Um, so there's, uh, so we're not going to worry about what we want to do is think about what is our axis of rotation. And we're going to pick the point here at A as my axis of rotation. And remember that each moment, so when we do the sum of the moments, we need um, the sum of the moments equals zero because it's not moving. But we want to do is think about it was what if it were moving? What if there weren't things holding it in place? Um, so one thing is at A, right at A, AX and AY don't have any impact because Remember that a moment is equal to the force crossed with the distance away from the center of rotation. And since our center of rotation is right here, then this R is equal to zero for A, Y, and AX. So the only things we need to think about are the G value, the, uh, the weight at G, and the force that at the wall um, provides at B to push away. And if I think about it, the weight causes this thing. If B weren't here, if the wall weren't here, it would rotate this way. And if, um, and B would, if, if it was weightless, the B would cause this, would push it up, right? It would make it go this way. So the, they rotate in different directions and that's why they, they're equal to zero. So if I want to figure out um, the R cross or F, the force crossed with R for the weight, right? The weight is here. And so my F is down. So that's my weight. This is, this is my W, but then R is this. This is my capital R right, right here, but I need it to be perpendicular. That's what the cross product says. So what I want is I want this distance, right? This is going to be the, com the component of R that is perpendicular to W to the weight. And so that distance, right, is the same as the formula that they tell us down here is 2R over pi, right? So this is, this is going to be 2R over pi. That's what that, st that distance is. Right, and in terms of B, how far away is B? So the B is, is this way, right? And its distance away is all the way here, right? Around my uh, point of rotation. And so that's gonna be two R. So that's where we get B times two R in one direction and W times that two R over pi in the other. And so that's how we calculate the moment. And we can then calculate B because we know W and then we do the sum of the forces. Um, just like we did before. And I'll send this um, page along just so you have it. But I wanted to explain like how we calculate, how we determine the components to plug in for F for the moments for G and the moments for B.